sleep. How important is it? How important to you is sleep? Sleep is a weird, weird, weird thing. Where does your mind go when you sleep? Why can't you control where your mind goes when you sleep? Why do you dream those crazy things that you dream? Why do you dream about things you don't want to dream about? Why do you dream about people you don't want to dream about? Why don't we just dream about great, pleasant things? Why don't we just dream about ways to solve our problems? How can we improve the quality of our sleep? Is it really even that important? Kim Townsville here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Remember, it's free to like, subscribe, leave a comment, share the video if appropriate. Let's talk about sleep. It's going to be dark because you're supposed to sleep in a room that's well darkened, even though I've got the lights on the side, otherwise you couldn't see me at all. Most recent research says that we need to diminish the amount of light coming into our eyes before we go to sleep so that our bodies can say it's time to settle down, it's time to settle down, but most of us are doing this well into the night, not hitting ourselves on the nose with our phones, but we're doing this. We're on some type of electronic device right before we go to sleep, even probably after we try to go to sleep. Some studies say that we need to get sleeps in increments of 90 minutes so that we go through the whole REM, non-REM sleep cycle. I've done the research on myself and I know that my magic time is seven and a half hours. I really need to get seven and a half hours every night. I try to do that and if I've exerted myself like through a really tough session at the gym or just uh, socially fatigued or just had a really rough day then sometimes I might sleep a little bit longer than that or if I uh, cheated myself on sleep earlier in the week I'm going to catch up on my sleep. I have a very protected sleep sleep life now. I have a video about that because while I was working on my dissertation I was really traumatized and couldn't even sleep in this bed. I ended up having to sleep on the couch because it made me feel cocooned. I wrapped pillows up all around me, much as I am now, because it just kept me from tossing and turning all night, really, to be honest. So once that was over, I moved to, um, to a spare bedroom in the household, because I just couldn't come back and sleep in this bed, and I didn't want to come back in here and have more negative experiences in this bed. So a friend of mine, Grover Kitchens, put a Facebook post on, and he said that he was reclaiming his bedroom, that he was making it a place of serenity and peace, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do that. So I cleaned everything up, I reorganized everything in here, and I thought, I'm just not going to let anything bad happen in here, I'm just going to bring peace and serenity in here, and so, so eventually I was able to come back and reclaim my bedroom. A lot of that had to do with my diffuser that I run in here, just general sounds, general little lights, I burned candles that smell good to me. I bought um, the right types of lotions, the sleep therapy lotion from Bath & Body. I have a video up about that. And that stuff really and truly works. This is the sleep therapy from Bath & Body. And I like it okay. It smells like lavender, but I'm kind of sick of lavender to be honest. And I'm really, I'm onto this right now. The sleep, excuse me, the stress relief. This is just awesome stuff. I can wear it night or day and it just calms me down. I really do like it. So I just put lotion all over myself and I get into bed and I enjoy it and I don't think, I don't worry about things. I'm like, I, okay, I've got bills to pay, I've got problems to solve at work, I've got problems to solve in my, you know, relationships and things like that. I've got chores to do like all of us do, but I don't think about those at night anymore because there's nothing I can do about them at night. So I just tell myself, you know what, that's a, that's a problem for tomorrow. That is something I will address tomorrow. Tonight. Tonight, my responsibility to myself is to enjoy this bed, to enjoy my lotion, to enjoy my jammies that I bought at Walmart for $3 a thousand years ago, and I'm going to cry when they wear out, but they don't even have a hole in them, and I wear them like all the time. People think I'm wearing the same pair all the time, but I actually have two pairs, so I don't repeat my jammies after I sleep in them. One time I washed them because I spent eight hours in them, or seven and a half hours in them, right? So they're dirty. They're just as dirty as my clothes. But I encourage you to find some aromas, some scents, some peace and serenity. I got a new bedspread, everything. Uh, make, your, make your sleep life, make your bed your sanctuary because you spend, you know what, like a third of your day asleep doing what? But that's when your body repairs itself. That's when your body is um, putting all the things back together again. So uh, give yourself um, 
some really good nutrition before you go to sleep at night. I eat a bowl of soup, my dinner, right before I go to bed tonight at night, and I sleep like a baby. I wake up, and I'm not starving to death. I don't see how people eat at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and go to bed on an empty stomach. I, I just can't do that. But to each his or her own, I understand that some people can't sleep on a full stomach because they have, you know, digestive issues and things like that. I'm rambling. I'm going to stop because I'm about to have my bowl of soup, watch a little bit of a movie, and then I'm going to come and get in this bed and have my my seven and a half hours of sleep meditation. That's really into what it is. I'm going to honor my body and honor my soul and honor my spirit and give it the rest that it needs. So until next time, I hope you sleep well and take care of your body. It's the only one you're ever going to get.